Today we're talking about when your ovaries become asshats, also known as polycystic ovarian syndrome. First, we have to establish that the development of cysts is part of ovulation. It is called the follicular phase. This sequence represents days 1 through 14, where anywhere from 10 to 20 immature follicles are selected to make the journey toward ovulation. Out of that group of 10 to 20, there will be only one winner. And that's a good thing because you probably didn't want 20 eggs waiting to be fertilized inside of you. Remember that this is actually a complicated orchestra that is being conducted by the brain and the ovary. And that's important to know because when you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, these egg cells stop right about here in the antral phase. If you have this or suspect that you may have it, you probably already know that this comes with an increase in testosterone. Now, where is that actually produced? It's going to come from a cell you've probably never heard of. It's called a theca or a thecal cell, and it lives on the outside of these little blue granulosa cells. Normally, the androgens, the testosterone that they produce, is taken up by the granulosa cells and converted into estrogen by an enzyme called aromatase. When you have PCOS, that is not what happens. The estrogen conversion process gets messed up because one of the signals is muddied or lost. And so the theca cells just continue to churn out unaltered androgens. If that wasn't complicated enough, polycystic ovarian syndrome does not present the same way in everyone. It has a lot of variation. Most people with ovaries fall into the category of A or B. I really want to bring your attention to this X factor because there's a lot of emerging research that is saying that insulin resistance may not be the instigating factor, but it may keep the process going. And that is because high levels of insulin in your blood can actually loop back around and cause the ovaries to produce too many androgens. And yes, there are pharmaceuticals, drugs that can help increase your sensitivity to insulin and help lower your blood sugar. But if you don't want to jump straight to a medication or you would like to see if insulin resistance is part of the root cause of your version of PCOS, then there's actually something really easy you can try. And you don't need any special equipment and it doesn't really cost anything because it's literally a single bout of moderate aerobic exercise. So something like walking. You heard me right, a 30 minute walk done once a day for a month might reduce symptoms of PCOS. Don't get scared, I know there's a lot of information here, but exercise basically uses up glucose here. And what that does is it causes these little gates that insulin sit down on to become more sensitive. And so not only does your blood glucose drop, you become more sensitive and use up the insulin that is free in your body. And this lasts for way longer than just the bout of exercise. That's why you only have to do it once a day to see the effect. If you have PCOS and you've tried one of these things, either the increase in activity or like metformin and semaglutide, please share your experience down in the comments so other people can see that it works or that it doesn't. I hope you found this helpful. As always, thanks for learning with me. And if you've got a question, you know what to do.